92.1 WROI, looking outside the window on 8th Street, going to a high today of 77. Right now, 60 degrees, our current temperature reading. And, of course, we're live on WROIFM.com. We're going to be streaming audio live on RTC Channel 5 and soon to be audio and video on RTC Channel 4. And thus we say, hi, Scott. Good morning, sir. <laughs> uh, nice to have Scott back in the studio this morning. And, of course, if you have that smartphone or Android device, you can download an app similar to the TuneIn Radio app. Take us wherever you happen to be going, which we know today will be to visit with Brian Johnson from the Fulton County Community Foundation. Yeah. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, Tom. Thank you very much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. I think Mr. Rogers was right. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Ah, yes, you got it can't right. can't ask for they? much nicer. No, you Although can't. I'm trying to figure out what season it is. <laughs> A couple of days ago, it was summer. Last night, it felt kind of like spring yeah, or fall. It was, yeah, but it was still summer according to the calendar. Let's okay. put it that way. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, tr I'll take your word for okay. that, Tom. So. Well, hey, we've got a lot of things going on at the Foundation um, right now. Um, first of all, I'd like to start off by saying congratulations to the class of 2016. Yeah, that's really nice. It's, it's really an amazing time to see all these kids' accomplishments and a time to look forward to the even greater things that they're going to do. Exactly. Um, we had our um, scholarship reception uh, last week, had a great turnout, um, and it's amazing when we start looking at the numbers. Um, this year, we were able to distribute over $100,000 in scholarships Isn't that to great? students. That, that's that pretty amazing. Great. Yes, it is. Um, and then, and that number does not include the Lilly scholarship that, that we're um, blessed to be able to give away. Um, if we add that in, um, that turns into over $190,000 in scholarships to local students as they pursue their, their goals. Um, I often hear people say, well, kids are what's wrong with, with this world. <laughs> well, if you have that opinion, I'd like to invite sure. you to be part of a scholarship committee because you will change your opinion very quickly. Rapidly, that's right. Um, a lot of these kids, it's amazing what um, students are able to accomplish during their high school career and just... Um, as being citizens of our community, making an impact in our world, it's it's very encouraging and wonderful to to see this happening. Right, I noticed too the schools are putting a lot more emphasis on volunteering for the kids, and the kids are joining yeah, into that. Yeah, they are. I, I think it's it's part of part of being a community citizen, right. and realizing that um, those are things that make our lives in our community. Um, better and in some cases even possible for for folks to be yeah. able to enjoy the things we have so um, congratulations to the class of 2016 we're looking forward to seeing um, what kind of accomplishments you have in the future um, as you prefer, pursue your educational goals so um, just some things when we're, when we're talking about scholarships of course we have a couple of graduate level scholarships the Ginger Miller Higher Education um, the Frederick Rakestraw Law Scholarship both those applications are due July 1st, um, so you just have a couple of days to complete those, but I'd encourage if you haven't, um, check those out and maybe pursuing something um, post-bachelor post degree or attending law school, um, check those out. Um, we also have um, one that's, that's neat to me, the Eric Smoker Memorial Scholarship. Of course, Eric was a very talented artist. Um, and this is available for students who are studying um, some sort of fine art, whether it be things like graphic art, art education, art history, um, things along those lines. Um, students have to be in their junior or senior year of college. Okay. Um, they also need to be a graduate of a Fulton County High School. Um, and there's also some information that, that's required for the application, things like um, some, some examples of the student's artwork. Um, and it's a wonderful way to, to keep Eric's memory alive and, and celebrate um, the artistic talents of, of students in our community. Um, that application is available on our website, nicf.org, um, and the deadline is July 29th. Um, so students have about a month to complete that. But um, if that's, that's an area where you're studying, I'd encourage you to check out that application. Um, another one that we have is the Back Home Again in Indiana. And this um, scholarship is primarily for non-traditional students. And when I say that, I mean a student that may not have gone to college right out of high school. Um, somebody that said, well, I, I need to get a job now. And they may have been working in the community and say, well, you know what? Now is the time for me to go back to get my degree. Or maybe 
um, take some classes in the area that I'm working in so that I can further my career that I have now. Um, and so that application is also available on our website. And the deadline for that is coming up a little bit quicker, July 8th. Um, so if you are looking to further your education, maybe go back to school or need some additional training for a job that you're working in now, um, the Back Home Again in Indiana scholarship um, would be a good one to look at. So um, just a reminder to students, if you received a scholarship from the foundation, um, and we have not heard back from you yet. We need to hear back from you so that we can get your scholarship paid. Um, Alice and Heidi, our scholarship coordinator, sent out email vouchers. Um, so if you did not receive that or don't remember receiving that, let us know. Um, we find that a lot of those end up in spam filters or junk mail boxes. Um, so students check that. And um, if you haven't received that, let us know. And we can get that sent to you again so that you can get that scholarship because we want you to be able to use these scholarships that you've earned. So, and also a reminder, we talked about this last month, but um, we have been notified by the Lilly Endowment that we will have a Lilly Scholarship again this coming year, but the timeline has changed a little bit on that. Um, this year, the application deadline will be September 2nd. So instead of having it done right after the first of the year, it'll be um, September 2nd. The application isn't available yet, but will be about um, August 1st. Okay. Um, so as students are getting back to school, um, that's something that they'll want to check out um, because that is, is a fairly detailed application. Um, it takes a little bit of time to, to fill that out. Um, but part of Lily's goal was to be able to move this up so that students can have a little bit better um, feel of what their financial status is. We have a lot of students that say, well, you know what, I'd really like to go to Notre Dame or sure. Ball State or... Um, or someplace that's a little bit more expensive than I can really afford, but exactly. um, I don't know if I can afford that. So by allowing students to know, um, we anticipate being able to let students know before the end of the year um, if they're a lowly scholar. So that way they can, they can make a more informed decision on that. Um, so just something to keep in mind, um, about the 1st of August, start looking for that application to be available again on our website, nicf.org. Um, and then it will be due back to our office by September 2nd. So um, it will be a little bit different process, but I think a change for the positive so that everybody knows um, what's available to them. Exactly. So, well, staying with this theme, today we wanted to talk a little bit about um, some scholarships. So often this time of year we talk about a few of the scholarships that are um, new to the Community Foundation. Um, and we actually this year had five that we were able to give out for the first time this year. And so I just wanted to go through and, and talk just a little bit about um, these scholarships and um, what they support. Um, the first one I wanted to start off with was one community scholarship. And that was a scholarship that was, was established um, by an individual that was passionate about uh, making sure people that, that may be in minorities um, or may not be the norm in our society were supported. Okay. Um, just to provide some encouragement to these students. Um, and so this was um, given out this year um, for the first time to be able to support um, students who, who may not quite fit what we, what we think of as the norm in our community. So a wonderful way to, to celebrate the diversity in our community. We don't always see a lot of it until we start looking for it and we really do have a, a diverse community of, of backgrounds. Um, another one, this has been a fun for a while, but this is the first year that we were able to give it out was the Joanne and Joellen Bendel Scholarship okay. Fund. Of course Joanne was a longtime supporter. People people saw Joanne and, and one of their first thoughts recently was 4-H. Um, of course she was very involved with that, but um, Joanne was a longtime educator, um, really did a lot of things both in our community and outside of our community to make sure people that that may not have come from the best circumstances, may not have all the opportunities available to them that that most people do, um, and, and really to encourage people to, to reach their full potential and had done that so well throughout her career. So this year the scholarship was given out um, in her memory and also in, in honor of her daughter Joellen um, to be able to help students 
pursue their educational goals that, that may not be able to otherwise. So it's, it was wonderful to, to celebrate um, Joanne's life um, by remembering her through this scholarship. Um, another one that we gave out for the first year was the Stephen and Catherine Hartzler Memorial Scholarship. Excellent. Of course, the Hartzlers um, have been so active in our community. Um, I don't think we could fit the list of things that they've done and supported into this time frame, but um, one of the first things when we started talking with their children about the scholarship was they've been season ticket holders for Notre Dame basketball and have, I, I don't think there was many, if any, Valley basketball games that happened without the Hartzlers in attendance um, since the school was, was open. Um, and have just been, of course, they were, they were active in politics. Um, Stephen served on the Community Foundation Board. And that was the first chance that I had the opportunity to meet him. Um, and, and they've just been wonderful supporters of the Community Foundation and of the community as a whole um, in the Akron area. So this was um, set up in their memory to be able to help um, keep their memory alive. And, and just a wonderful way to, to remember two really special people in our community. Another one that was a first time scholarship was the Joseph and Virginia Quick Scholarship. Of course, um, it's um, Quick Lanes in Rochester was operated by the Quick family. Right. Um, not, only, not only Joseph and Virginia, but um, also through their next generation. Um, and it's been wonderful to see, of course, no surprise that this goes to a student that's been involved in the bowling program. Um, and this was the first year that we were able to give this out to kind of celebrate some of the things um, that the Quicks were able to um, establish. Of course, Virginia passed away in 2012 and Joe passed away at the end of 2011. Um, but it's kind of interesting, you look at their history and um, from 1951 to 1987, they operated Quick Lanes and, and supported, I, I don't know how many high school kids went through, and of course we have a wonderful bowling program yes, in Rochester. We yes, we do. Um, I kind of suspect that that's due in large part to the quick support of, of that program and, and wonderful to see um, the impact that that's had. So um, so bowling students, there's a, there's a scholarship specifically for you next year, but wonderful to see that. Excellent. And, and kind of staying along the lines of athletics, um, the Herbert P. Davidson Athletic Scholarship. Um, I never had the, the joy of, of meeting Herb in person, but um, when we started establishing this scholarship, I stopped, stopped in and talked with the athletic department at, at Rochester High School, and they said he wasn't somebody that you'd probably notice, but he was there every game, um, just always supporting, and, and I can give a shout out because he was um, played in the minor leagues for the Cubs and um, had the opportunity but never did try out for the Cubs and as a Cubs fan this year I can celebrate <laughs> celebrate that and, and kind of envious of his his abilities there but uh, had just been a big supporter of Rochester Athletics when, when I was talking with Ryan Health he said I don't think there was a basketball game that I didn't see him sitting somewhere in the stands and cheering for Rochester cool. and, and just was was a wonderful supporter of that and was, was a gifted athlete his, himself. So What a nice way to preserve the memory, though. It is. So. It is. We often have people ask us, well, why does this scholarship, if you didn't know the quicks, you would say, right. why is it important to be somebody that's involved with bowling? Well, it's pretty obvious sure. to see that they were supporters of bowling, operating the bowling alley, supporting programs. Um, in, in Herb's case, um, athletics it was something that played a big role in his life and um, he helped support that in future generations so um, it's wonderful to see um, like you said these memories supported right. um, some of the folks and, and that's one of the things that I love about my position is some of these folks I knew some of these folks I didn't know but by learning about these scholarships and kind of seeing the things that are supported through them um, I get a glimpse of, of what these people were about and things that were important to them. 
um, in their lives. And it's really wonderful to see that passed on to future generations. We pass these stories off to students that receive these scholarships and they, they get a little bit of a glimpse of the people that these scholarships were established by or in honor of or in memory of and, and able to, to see some of the impact that um, we may not really know but once we start hearing about this, the big impact that these people have had in our community and the lives of, of students. So it's wonderful to see um, these scholarships celebrate um, things that people care about. And, and not only that, but also help make a difference in the lives of future generations that can then make an impact in our community and, and be able to um, repeat that cycle over and over again. So Excellent. Um, it's wonderful to see that and I always, um, enjoy hearing about what these people were about and what what was important to them and, and carrying that on through and what their scholars. contributions were to our community it is it is and so um, it's wonderful to celebrate that so again yeah. congratulations to the class of 2016 um, but without without our donors these scholarships would not have been possible so i I'd, I'd like to say thank you to everybody who has made this possible um, big or small um, one thing the Community Foundation focuses on is you don't have to be Warren Buffett or Bill Gates to be able to make an impact in our community. Um, we see a lot of scholarships get built with small gifts, exactly. um, memorial gifts, um, fifteen, twenty, thirty dollars at a time, um, and then turn into these funds that make a big impact on um, students' lives. And so that's that's really the goal of the Community Foundation is to be able to help anybody make an impact um, in our community and so that's that's one thing that that we really try and help promote is the fact that anybody can make a difference through through giving and and pooling of funds and being able to make a big impact through many small gifts or in some cases a few large sure. gifts so um, it's it's open and available to anyone so but Again, thank you to our donors for making this over $100,000 in scholarships possible um, for students. Um, I think a lot of times we don't always see the impact. Um, we think it's making an impact, but we try and look at that. And when we, when we can look at a number like that and say, that's really amazing for our community, um, it's, it's really heartwarming to see how this has made a difference in, in people's lives. So. Just a quick reminder again about the scholarships, the Ginger Miller Higher Education and the Frederick Rakestraw Law Scholarships. Those applications are due July 1st, this which Friday. is this Friday. Um, the Eric Smoker Memorial Scholarship, uh, students who are f studying a area of fine arts, um, July 29th is the deadline for that okay. scholarship. The Back Home Again in Indiana Scholarship, um, July 8th which is not this Friday, but next we Friday. Um, those applications are all available on our website, nicf.org. Um, and again, a reminder about the Lilly Scholarship. Be watching about the 1st of August um, on our website. We'll have information about that application and when that's available. So, okay, excellent. Um, we will be looking forward to seeing these scholarships given out and make an impact in our community. You bet. So if folks have questions about anything that we talked about today or you're just interested in what the Community Foundation does or maybe you have an idea for a project in our community, again, a reminder, our grant applications this year, we have no deadlines for our grant cycles. So if you have a project now that you'd like to talk to us about and potentially interested in a grant, we'd love to talk to you about that too. So um, you can give us a call, 224-3223. Um, you can find us online, nicf.org, um, like us on Facebook, Northern Indiana Community Foundation, or stop by our office here at 715 Main Street in Rochester. We'd love to talk to you about any questions or ideas you may have for the community. Brian Johnson, as always, thank you very much for coming by. We appreciate your time, and uh, we also appreciate the great work you do, not only for Fulton County, but for the Northern Indiana Community Foundation well. As well. It, it's a community effort, and again, thank you to our donors and everybody who makes these these scholarships and everything we do possible. Brian, thanks. Thanks, Tom.